Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back to The Race, where we're going to bring you a new series called Race to Green. It's brought to you by UMG. And my first guest this week is Felix Rosenquist. He, of course, raced last week in our amazing sim racing battle, the all-star esports battle, as it were. And he's going to be doing so again this week on Sunday. You can check the description down below. Um, but Felix, first and foremost, um, how you doing in there? You're, you're, you're locked up in India. You got enough toilet paper? I'm stacked up, man. I'm good. Uh, you know, just trying to pass time like everyone else. Um, so yeah, more into sim racing now than I've ever been, I'd say. Yeah, well, I guess, unfortunately, it sounds like it's going to be some of the only racing. Pretty incredible that it's an opportunity for everyone to, first off, get entertained by that, that sim racing exists and we can still enjoy our sport. But you went through everything. Um, contextually, for those of you at home, Felix and I, we've never met in person yet, but we've conversed online quite a few times through uh, mutual friends and I was actually on my well just about about two hours away from leaving to come down to St. Pete you obviously were already there and then everything's canceled yeah yeah yeah. I mean how was that experience it was weird man you know you 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 kind of build the whole off season in the car has a really long off season because we haven't been on track since September and we had really little testing compared to other years this year so we had only had one and a half days of testing and then going into St. Pete, you kind of, you know, it's been such a long time uh, just sitting around and then you, you're you so excited and then everything just, yeah, not only St. Pete, but, you know, the whole start of the season gets blown and like canceled. So it's a, it's a weird mental thing and it's almost like you're going, it almost feels like the season is over now and like your body goes down to like off season mode again. And uh, yeah, it, it, was, it, it was weird. I was going to ask about that. Yeah. I, I mean, you had your parents there, a bunch of friends were on the way over. I was going down to join them. I mean, this was, this was a big deal for you. Obviously this year, Chip Ganassi, you guys have big aspirations and ambitions. I'm sure championship is, is certainly a word that's uh, been floated around with goals in mind, but now you say you're almost in off season mode. What can you do right now in isolation aside from SIM, which is incredible in its own right for training, but what can you do to stay physically in shape right now um, that that's become another issue actually yesterday because I, I was kind of lucky in my in my building where i where i have my apartment in in carmel in indiana there's uh we had a little gym which no one never really used it. so that was like my workout place the whole winter and they shut that down yesterday so oh, wow and that was really like yeah, the nail in the coffin for, for all kinds of physical activity because I can't run because I have a problem with my legs. So now it's like maybe I have to get a bike or I have to like my, me and my girlfriend worked out in, in our living room yesterday. And I was like, this is not going not gonna to fly. This is not going to be the way for two months. Sorry, but can't, do, can't do the high intensity like that seven minute YouTube workouts not working for you. Yeah, like you're watching <laughs> on TV or you know, some. Yeah, no. Nah. Uh, it doesn't work. So yeah, it, that, that's that's becoming a challenge for all of us. You know, how do we even keep fit right now? Yeah, certainly an issue. Um, but like I say, at least we have sim racing. That's a pretty cool go to. Um, you do some other gaming. I mean, you're you're in Indiana, which is you know home for you, but it's still isolation. So what what are you doing other than sim racing to keep yourself entertained? I mean, I've been playing around with a bunch of different games. Me and my friends go online sometimes and just, you know, yeah, play around on anything. I, I've been pretty much into uh, Dark Souls, if you know that lately. It's like a, it's actually an online game, but you you spend most of the time by your own and like you collect better gear and you kill bosses and all that kind of stuff. It's super difficult. Like it's famous for being extremely, ex- extremely difficult. And I actually finished it two days ago. I saw on your so, Instagram. Yeah. Yeah, so I was pretty proud about that. Uh, <laughs> so now I need a new project. But uh, but yeah, I, I've always been, you know, I haven't spent so much time actually gaming. But I always, like where I grew up in Sweden, it was a big thing. Like everyone in school were playing Counter-Strike and, and all kinds of stuff. So so I've been, you know, I always follow the community and I have a lot of friends who so, who are really into it as well. Yeah, and obviously so there's there's the crossover for my world in Counter-Strike and your friend Dan, who's in his own right a decent driver. I think he's, what, Swedish GT or former Swedish GT champion. Um, yeah. Done a bunch of racing. Yeah, he's, he, we actually We were actually teammates back in the day in Formula Renault in Sweden. So we, I think we won the equal amount of races, but I, I won the championship with like one point or something. Oh, uh, but he, he's super good. He's he's really talented. I, yeah. I think he would fit right in in IndyCar as well. Yeah, well, that's, it's interesting because that's he reached out to me, obviously, through Counter-Strike and his love for it. And then that's how you and I got talking. Um, you actually reached out to me 
building a new sim rig. I don't know why I was the resource, but I appreciate it. Um, but talk us through the sim because uh, we'll get to that in a minute. You've done some sim racing. People slept on you last week in chat, and I was sitting there going, hey, come on, man. This guy was in the Vegas E-Race, second there. Obviously, we're seventh last week, first to the real drivers again. You've you've done some sim racing. What's, what's, what's the history? Yeah, so I, I think my, you know, my my ninety percent of my mileage on sim racing is probably you know it's not online. I basically it started when I was in um, when I lived in Sweden and I did Formula Three in uh, in Germany and Europe. Uh, so I had a, I had a PR or I have a PR guy who's helping me and he traveled to me with uh, for every race back then and before every race, like before we took off, we always drove to the races. And uh, the day before, we would always meet up at my place. Like he would. He would sleep over there, and and we would spend the whole night uh, playing that the specific track that we were going to, in a, like Formula One car or something that unrealistic, um, and that's like how I, you know, I, I just had a Logitech attached to my desk and the mm -hmm. pedals on the floor, and and that's actually the setup I've been running until this year when I actually got a proper sim. So so actually that's like, you know, everyone thinks I'm some kind of sim. Pro and that I've done a bunch of you know world online racing, which is not true. I mean, I done that race in in Las Vegas in Formula E where I finished second, which was fantastic. But uh, yeah, part of from that is just you know playing around for fun. I haven't really got into the you know competitive part of it yet. So that's actually ridiculous um, when you say that because to finish second in Vegas with guys like. Uh, Bono Huis, Gregor Hutu, Oli Pakala. There's some incredibly good names in that field. And you say you didn't do much. You were using a Logitech at the time. I mean, you've driven everything. Let's be honest. You did Formula Renault. You mentioned that. You've done Formula 3 DTM. So you've had a roof over your head, which, hey, I like roofs over my head. I'm not going to lie. I, that's, I'm a GT <laughs> guy. I'll just put that out there. But now you're an IndyCar. I'm sure the goal was probably Formula One, but the point is you can adapt. You can drive just about everything. Um, is Sim any different in that way, or is it very different? I find it's very I, – I don't get enough feedback maybe, or at least that's my excuse. Yeah, it, it's uh, it's weird how I, – I think it's a very personal thing how the Sim feels. Uh, some drivers have a – I think it's the way like you, you can probably be a driver who drives a lot with your eyes, so you can – drive a lot with your ass or you can you know drive with your feet and and i think if you're a driver that drives with your eyes you have a very easy way of adapting to the sim it would feel almost natural to you whilst if you if you rely a lot on you know feeling the rear of the car it could be pretty difficult because you get no feedback and you get all that feedback through the wheel instead uh, so i i think a good sim racer is really good at feeling you know what you need to be quick and and how you know even if it doesn't feel really normal you know they will find those little tricks and and, and that that's been a good practice for me as well you know just to get in and then you see as you say like bono he's doing yeah. two seconds quicker uh, and you're like okay so where am i gonna you start and, you know you how, how am i gonna close this gap you, you gonna pass him this week because uh, i think you what finished right behind him both times that i mentioned again yeah 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 uh yeah, I always see his the gearbox of his his car ahead when I'm doing these events. So <laughs> no, he's really impressive, and I I, I, I think yeah. I, I was well, I was just gonna say I know Bono, and I know he's quite proud of keeping you behind him. So if you beat him this week, it might break him. You might just you might just break his mentality permanently at that point. Well, I, I think honestly, I'm happy if I finish behind him again because it feels like I'm the one being where I'm not supposed to, like overachieving, and he's probably underachieving. Uh, at least last race where where he's normally at yeah well we'll see I, I didn't talk to him too much about it but i do know that uh he is a big fan of yours and i know that a lot of the guys uh that i race with online rate you not only just because you're quick in a sim and they respect that but also just because of your pedigree uh, let's touch a little bit on that because this indycar season obviously like i say championship is, is definitely i'm sure a word you don't have to admit to that but a word that you guys have talked about your goal growing up, obviously, you're from Sweden, um, European. Formula One was kind of always on the radar. How do you kind of compare the two? I think IndyCar, personally, I think the racing's better, but is F1 kind of still the dream somewhere inside of your head? A little bit, you know. I, I don't, I don't lose much sleep over it, but uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty annoyed by the fact that I haven't driven an F1 car. I think that's that's always been a goal of mine. Then, then actually racing, you know, as you said, I, I love IndyCar racing because. 
it's tight. Uh, you know, all the teams are competitive. The tracks are really, you know, they're just something else. All of them. Um, yeah, it's. I, I I think it fulfills all my, you know, what I think a racing series should be like, uh, which is all you need, really. You know, I, I, especially when you're getting a bit older, like, like I unfortunately am now, uh, 28. You know, you 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 kind of need to have you need to have that good racing to 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 become uh, I guess, satisfied you know in f1 let's say okay fine if you're lewis hamilton you know it, it, it's great but it, it, if you're in the middle of the grid you know i would find it hard to do that every week if you take uh, nico hulkenberg for example who's uh, you know one of the best drivers um you know he, he's never been on a podium which is crazy and and that that's that's saying the whole thing about f1 that i don't like and what i don't miss um so yeah you know i'm i'm happy i'm with a top team with ganassi in indycar and that's you know that's you know you have the chance to win every weekend and that's all you need yeah that's i mean that's pretty impressive and i think that's that's a key thing because in f1 you don't necessarily have a chance every weekend with you guys you do that certainly uh makes it more exciting um hopefully we get the season underway soon and we can see that kind of come to fruition. I know, like you say, it kind of feels like an off season right now. You are kind of locked up. I know you said after the race and in talking to you and, and uh, you were going to go to the Bahamas, obviously travel got locked down. You're back in Indy. We touched on it. Gaming, sim racing. What else are you doing? Any, any racing documentaries you're watching or any series on TV you're trying to keep entertained? Well, your one, uh, the grassroots racing. Really? That's the best, man. Ah, oh, dude, I appreciate uh, it. I mean, I w- I'm not watching it right now, but I watched it uh, a couple of months ago. And, you know, I, I don't know how I stumbled into it because I, yeah, actually I know how we, me and my uh, Dan, who you mentioned before, we uh, we kind of had a grassroots project back in, in Sweden last winter and we bought a Ford Mondeo, which we uh, turned into a race car. I heard, uh, I heard all about this. Uh, I yeah. was uh, Dan invited me to come drive. I didn't know if I wanted to come show you up. That's all I can say. Oh, man, you should have, you know... Th- that, actually, the car broke down, but it, it was good fun. It was like, at a, do you do Celsius? It was one degree Celsius, like just above freezing. Yep. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it was raining and it was just really bad conditions. But uh, man, it, it, it was good fun. Like that that's the most fun I haven't had in a long time. And anyway, so, so that's how I got into your... Uh, that's, you know, that's your little series. Yeah, that's so cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, people can check that out on this channel. I appreciate you bringing that up. Uh, I'm flattered. I'm blushing right now. Um, Good. Yeah, I mean, that's that's <laughs> the fun. It's I love racing at the grassroots level. Obviously, the M3 is pretty sweet to drive. I don't want to go too much into my own self here. This is supposed to be about you, man. But uh, yeah, I no, but every, everyone who's watching should they should check it out because it's 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 kind of addicting when you follow the whole. <laughs> thing and, and, and when you see me hit the wall and scream and yell like a oh, like man. a baby <laughs> i still feel sorry for you on that one I, I can understand your anger yeah you've probably had a few more than a few shunts um i don't know have you ever had one in your own car though that's that's the difference that's the difference yeah no i haven't had any of those that i had to pay for myself or kind of had to back in the day but uh yeah i think at the time i hit the wall i probably didn't think about that anyway, so. <laughs> yeah i thought about a lot of things when i hit the wall so let's just put it that way i think you can hear all yeah. the thoughts coming out really quickly <laughs> um what uh, what was your first car then what, what, obviously it wasn't a race car but what, what did you drive on the start is it a volvo like sweden sab it wasn't a volvo or sab it was a mercedes 190e cosworth which is uh, so a- my a, fr- a friend of my dad had that car and it was like a proper it was just rusted uh, completely and um and we bought it for like 500 dollars or something wow and, and we fixed it up and that was my first car actually it, it was finished when i was like 16 so my sister drove it for two years and and then i drove it a little bit until my friend uh, hit a tree like he he just got his license and he asked if he could borrow it for uh for one day and then he called me the next morning it's like i hit a tree <laughs> oh man no you didn't you're joking <laughs> uh and then i it was literally like 100 meters away from where i was at the time and i just uh... went out the door and i saw the car like wrapped around a tree uh <sighs> yeah so that, that was my first car but it was a really cool one and i think I'll, I'll try to someone bought it and fixed it up again and like it was completely bent but uh, I, i'll probably try to buy it one day again yeah wow that's a pretty cool first car i feel like that's yeah. um it's a bit of a classic actually 
It is. It's like back from the back in the DTM glory days. Uh, yeah, which that's a good, great point. Yeah, absolutely. It, that was like the M3, the E30 M3, and and that yeah. particular car. I oh, mean, that I was think Alpha Romeos as well. At the yep, time. I, yeah, that's right. Don't don't yeah. ask me which model of Alpha. I'm in Canada. We, yeah, don't, we don't get too many Alphas. I think you can get them here now, only like as of a year ago. But I don't even know because I live in the middle of nowhere. Um, yeah, it's been a bit a little, a little bit weird for isolation. I feel weird because uh, where I am in the middle of nowhere, it's life is almost normal. I just sit in this room and play games all day, anyway. So, um, <laughs> what what else are you watching? Uh, you mentioned my series. I appreciate it. What about uh, have you seen, obviously Drive to Survive is a big one. Have you seen much of it? Yeah, I've seen all of it actually. It's, really? Uh, yeah. Did you know that it, I was it's... in it? Where are you? Yeah. You, I mean, obviously, well, maybe you might have missed I, I, it. I, 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 I haven't watched it like super intensely, so I might, I think, might have missed something. I think it's but... uh, episode eight at seven minutes and 42 seconds. I just happen to be walking by Hulkenberg. Um, so I'm, ah, in okay. I'm in it. Officially, okay. I am in it. So, ah, cool. Yeah, you can go look for me. Superstar. What's your favorite? That was obviously my, yeah, thank you. Uh, I think that was my <laughs> favorite part. What's your favorite part? Uh, I, I thought it was pretty refreshing, to be honest. You know, it, it, it's refreshing to see all these characters being you know, a bit personal, you know, we're, we're kind of used to, you know, seeing, especially with Ferrari, Mercedes and all this, you know, everything is kind of strict and boring and you're not allowed to say what you think. And then you see, you know, like Hamilton and Toto Wolf, they're yeah. like, they don't even know how to say their the official name of their own team, which is, you know, <laughs> at first might seem a bit unprofessional, but then it, it's actually pretty charming. And it's, it's, it gives a, I think F1 has done the right thing to go that direction because the fans are young and they want to get younger fans and it, it, it's it's just more fun to see when when they're human you know like, yeah 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 i, I don't I, know if you agree I, I, I think liberty media has done a great job in becoming more accessible and i and that and that's that i've maybe to tie this all together as we get toward the end i don't want to take up too much of your time but i think sim racing is another massive way of doing that obviously lando norris streaming last weekend broke twitch records for for sim racing and had something like seventy five thousand concurrent viewers you guys had a tremendous amount of people watching the esports, the all star esports battle. Um, and I, I think that Sim is a great way to cross over and connect to the real world because money is tight sometimes in the racing world. I think you went through it a little bit in Indie Lights as well with some budget funding. It's not always easy, but Sim is a pretty good way into the sport. It is. I mean, it, it's still it, it's still expensive compared to most things you can do. You know, if you compare to soccer or basketball or whatever. But I mean. I always say, you know, I, 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 as I said, I, I used the Logitech G25, which, you know, it was fine. Like, I, I, I'm not really going quicker on the equipment I have now, which is, I mean, my rig is probably worth around nine, ten grand right now. Uh, and back then, it was worth like, I mean, without the computer, it was like 300 bucks, which is, I mean, anyone who wants to get into it can can probably find that kind of money. Uh, and yeah. It, you know, I I, th I think the the sport will go forward when you can bring down the price to that. When you can have a proper rig for about you know five hundred bucks, then yeah. then I think it's where it needs to be, and, and people can really really get into it. And and, and I mean it, it's it's cool. You see so much talent that you haven't seen before. Like who's this guy? And he's just you know blowing everyone away with seven tenths of a second per lap, and and you don't even know who it is or where he lives. And, and that just shows that it, it's so easy to think that all the talent is on the TV where, where you're yeah. always seeing it in F1 and in the car. But I mean, there's so much potential. Well, in, and in... I, I think one of the cool things, obviously world's fastest gamer, um, formerly GT Academy, Norbert Michelis is another guy. There's been lots of guys that have gone from Sim to real. I've always said, you know, okay, whether it's Fernando Alonso or Lewis Hamilton or Michael Schumacher, whoever the best in the world is, they're the best that we saw. What if there was someone that was more naturally talented that never had the opportunity? And maybe they do exist in the sim world because that's the avenue. I mean, sim, you're right. There's a ton of skill that is making the most of an opportunity with it. And I think that's super cool. To your point as well about sort of the investment and price point. Yeah, I, I started on a Logitech as well. And you're right. I'm not any faster with my nicer rig. Um, it just has a better feel and it, you know, it's, it's, sitting in it maybe feels cooler and it looks cooler and your friends yeah. all drop their jaw a little more when they come <laughs> into your room, but you can be pretty quick for not a lot of money, which is, is, yeah. is pretty cool. I think as well, like I say, this is accessible and right now when everyone's locked in isolation, I mean, 
gaming, first and foremost, shout out to game developers around the world. Thank you for what you do, because how many people are relying on gaming right now? I mean, Twitch numbers are through the roof. Steam was over like 20 million active viewers last uh, users last week. Battle.net yeah. crashed for Activision. Everything was just soaring. The numbers were unbelievable. And that, I mean, think of, I mean, we're in a pretty weird place in the world right now. Like this is almost apocalyptic and I, I it's, it seems surreal, but without gaming, I mean, this would be even more unbearable. So sim racing, what a time. This is a perfect opportunity. It's pretty cool that we get to do stuff like this for people at home as well. It's, it's a super opportunity and it's just what we need right now. And as you say, you know, I, I'm also thankful for, for all the games right now. Like even my girlfriend is playing Sims <laughs> when I'm playing simulator. So, uh, so yeah, it, it's, it's definitely, um, like a good thing in the whole mess. All right. Well, sweet. Awesome. Uh, look, please beat Bono this week. Can you promise me that you'll at least try? I will try very hard. I'm going to go practice right now. Okay, perfect. Awesome. Uh, thanks, Felix, so much for talking to us on our Race to Green series brought to you by UMG. We're going to be doing a few more interviews with some of the other drivers that are coming into Sim while they're waiting in the off season for Corona to blow over and the rest of us get to be entertained by them. You can check that out in the description down below. We'll see you there.